Hello, I have just finished reading this book, The House of Islam, A Global History, by Ed Hussein. Now, Ed Hussein, I didn't actually know, is a guy who was formally radicalized by a terrorist organization, uh, stepped away from that, set up something called Kilian, um with another guy, Majed Nawaz, who apparently has a slot on LBC now. So quite a well-known guy. Um, this book was bought as a present for me, so it's not one... That I necessarily would have read, which is always nice. People buy me books because then I end up broadening my horizons rather than just reading only what I'm interested in. This book is actually very, very good. On the back it says, this should be compulsory reading. And that's by a guy called Peter Frankopan, author of The Silk Roads. Um, the Guardian calls it a powerful corrective. And the Sunday Times calls it compelling. Now what's it actually about? It's about the history of Islam, where Islam is now, what all these different things about Islam, I mean one that will raise a lot of airs I guess is a Sharia, you know, the right wing papers love to scream about how we want to, well not we, but how terrorist, extremist, Muslim organisations, David Trump likes, uh, Donald Trump likes to scream back as well, want to make Sharia the law, they don't know what the hell Sharia is to start with, um, and this explains what it is very very powerfully, Sharia is a legal system or a guide for behaviour based upon five principles, and those principles are uh, the protection of life, which is foremost, uh, property, um, intellect, faith, <laughs> there's a fifth one as well, which, uh, family, I believe, I'm doing this from memory, maybe I should have made notes, um, so all these people, all these terrorist groups, because that's what they are, who are going around places like, um, you know, Iraq, ISIS, for example, killing, chopping of hands and everything, that goes against the first principle of Sharia anyway. Sorry, Sun and Daily Mail readers, but Sharia doesn't mean all the bullshit you think it means. Um, read something apart from the right-wing press. You'll learn something. It might actually be good for you. I'm having a bit of a rant, aren't I? Very, very interesting book. I mean, it talks about the idea of Sharia, for example. The first thing to consult when looking for Sharia is the Quran. If you can't find an answer there, because the Quran doesn't cover absolutely everything, Look at the Hadith, which is the sayings and the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. And the third thing, if you can't find an answer in any of these, consult the opinions of reasonable people. Yeah, Reasonable people don't do things like chop off people's hands and insist that women cover up and implement sexual uh, apartheid like Saudi Arabia does. All these terrorist groups you'll learn in here actually come from uh, Saudi Arabia. The, the royal family of Saudi Arabia, the House of Saud, um, has spent 200 billion pushing out, pumping out what's called Salafism or Wahhabism. Wahhabi was the name of a guy who was a very, very fundamental literalist Muslim uh, who joined up with a guy from with a guy called Saud, who went on to become the Saudi royal family back in the early 70s, um, and they basically teamed up. Now, the people of Saul, uh, they became royal family, and um, Wahhabi, who's from a, a village called uh, Najd, was actually, him and his people had been banned from Mecca and Medina by, by Ottoman rulers, by Muslim rulers, for centuries basically, because they knew how dangerous they are. They insist on literally interpreting the Quran, which is actually counter to what the Quran is, what the Quran teaches. Uh, they insist on enforcing by law uh, what they think is the literal interpretation of the Quran. Um, they destroyed, they have destroyed the graves, they've destroyed monuments of very, very important historical figures in Islam. The point that it gets to is that all these terrorist organizations, um, Al Qaeda, uh, you know, ISIS, they are basically a product of Wahhabism. This dressing women like, uh, you know, from head to toe in black, that is traditional in the village of Najd. It's got nothing to do with actual Islam, but Islam has been, for, you know, maybe for want of a better term, Islam has been globalized by the Wahhabis. And the ancestors of the Wahhabis, the people who practice what they practice, were actually called by the Prophet Muhammad, Kharijites, people who were outside of the religion. So, yes. Islam at the moment, how it is practiced by the majority of Muslims, is very, very dangerous. It's offensive. It leads to things like ISIS. But it's actually <laughs> not Islam. If you want to find out what Islam is, read this book. It's very, very interesting. Um, 
other things that it addresses are like the history of Islam. Um, you know, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating. I, I certainly recommend reading it. I know it's going to be of limited appeal. For example, if somebody right now asked me to read about the paleo diet, I'd think, yeah, right, what a load of BS. Yeah, so I probably won't read it. I know, thanks to the media in this country, um, you know, most people think Islam is the enemy, is a terrible thing, is going backwards and all this bullshit. For a thousand years, for a whole millennium, the Islamic, you know, the Islamic empire, let's call it, although it wasn't considered an empire, it was considered... The whole idea of empire and countries and borders is a very Western thing. It's called Westphalia. That comes from a book by Henry Kissinger, which is re referred to in this book. Um, yeah, it was largely peaceful. It, if you went to Jerusalem a hundred years ago, Muslims, Jews, um, Christians, you know, or of different of different ethnic backgrounds as well, all lived happily together in peace. It was the the center of the free Abrahamic religions. They all come from that part of the world. You know, Christians a hundred years ago, oh, this is going to cause trouble. Christians a hundred years ago, Arab speaking Christians, guess what they called God? Allah. <gasps> oh, terror. And then you had this whole thing about the West used to be known as Christendom, by the way. Um, so, very interesting book, very eye opening. Um, there's a lot of themes in there which were coming into my head as I was reading it. And I'm doing this, this review in, in quite a rush. But certainly, if you want to learn, you know, about a solution as well. The, the writer suggests that the Arab nations form a union, uh, just like the EU formed a union. Before, you know, a hundred years ago, Europe looked pretty much like the Middle East looks now. An absolute mess, dictators, wars, all vying. And, and then after the world wars, two world wars, we came up with the European Union, which at the moment, if you voted Brexit, is a terrible thing. But it did actually bring us a long, long period of stability, wealth, and a lot of other good things. And we'll see how it plays out now that we're out of the EU. But it, another thing that's referred to, why is there such a high level of, basically, uh, sexual harassment? Um, why is there such a high level of downloading porn in countries like Saudi Arabia, like Pakistan, where Wahhabi Islam has been pushed and everybody has accepted it without thinking, without questioning? Questioning and thinking are a very, very important part of Islam. Just what well, they used to be before the Wahhabis kind of took over, um, because you're repressing sexuality. If you repressing sexuality leads to sexual abuse. Uh, look at a church priests are not allowed to marry. Well, guess what? Priests still have a sex drive. What does that lead to? Well, unfortunately, we know it leads to abuse of children. Um, the Middle East, women are treated like shit, basically. You know, uh, what does that lead to? Sexual harassment. Humans are humans. And men have sexual urges and women have sexual urges. And if you try to press it down, it leads to trouble. Um, and that is something that Wahhabism has done. So, very interesting book. I should probably say no more about it because I've going to upset a lot of people. And you don't want to accept extremists because you might get killed. Um, <laughs> I'd recommend it. I won't give it 10 out of 10, like I said, just because of the content it covers. Very well written. Very interesting. Very informative. I love a book that can teach you something and challenge your way of thinking. Ed Hussain, The House of Islam, a Global History, 8 out of 10, very good book.